And so I went digging like how she's doing now and naively in my mind I was like, oh my God, she's living a great life. And then I found out that she actually passed away. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Press spoon at seam until I always hate it. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Just roll out of bed. This video is going to be a weekend in the life. I also want to give you guys some updates about what's been going on with my pain since, you know, the last update video I made. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch, plan my day and my weekend and then i'll let y'all know what you can expect to see so let's get into it Y'all know how much I love cooking and making new recipes and doing all sorts of cool things, but we've had a dilemma. We've had a dilemma that's a little TMI. I dropped a piece of onion on the floor. Um, and you know, I've been, I've been struggling. I've been struggling with my bowel movements, y'all. They just, they just not trying to come out and I, I can't do it anymore. I can't. So <laughs> what I've been recommended by my dearest brother Carl he's like why don't you like have a week of just like soups and smoothies and like try not to eat like try to limit your solid food intake and my nurse practitioner also told me to have more smoothies so I've started making smoothies in the morning but sometimes I don't want a smoothie I don't want cold things all the time like I genuinely don't like that it's cold sometimes. I'm just like not in the mood for it. So what I'm going to do right now, I still want to like use up the veggies and sort of be creative in the kitchen. So what I'm doing is making a roasted tomato soup. I'm totally winging this. I don't have a recipe. I haven't figured it out yet. I might like look up some things just for inspiration, but I cut up like maybe a third of a white onion or yellow, a yellow onion. And then I have some an heirloom tomato and some regular Roma tomatoes that are definitely really ripe and just need to be used up. And then I had some zucchini, carrots, add some celery, but it didn't look great. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just not trying to get sick. So I just forgot, forgot, forgo. I ended up foregoing the celery. And now I'm gonna roast this in the oven at 350, I don't really know what temperature I should be roasting it at. I probably should cover it too so it doesn't get like burnt. But anywho, and then I just put olive oil, salt, pepper, cayenne powder, um, cayenne pepper, and that's it. I'm not really sure how I want it to taste, so I wanted to keep it pretty mild for now and then season it when I like put the soup together. So yeah, I'm super excited. I've never like made my own tomato soup before, which is pretty funny. It sounds like I'm doing something major, but I'm not, but I'm really excited. So let's get it. Oh, no, I had a whole other pan in here. Oh, that's okay. I'm 
not gonna deal with it right now. Actually, I will. I will. Just needs to get out of here. There we go. Okay. All right. So today is going to be a very busy, productive day because I want to get a few things done before tomorrow. So today it's mainly going to be chores. I would like to have a, a time to exercise, maybe go for a walk or do an at-home exercise. I will be picking up one of my prescriptions today. I have to do that before five. And I would like to record a video for next week and start editing it. So that's basically what I have on the books for today. So while my veggies are roasting in the oven, I'm going to go ahead and get started on, oh, and I also want to send some emails. So I'm going to get started on some emails, making sure I am ready for recording later on tonight. So today I want to get a lot done so that I can really enjoy the day tomorrow. Either way, I'm gonna enjoy the day. I need to get that tomorrow. Either way, I'm gonna have a great time, but I would still like to get a lot done today. So let's get to it. y'all the veggies are looking good it smells amazing I decided to take the top foil off so that the top of the tomatoes could roast and I know I know I know I just said I was trying to do soft foods but like soup without anything yeah no I couldn't resist so <laughs> I'm gonna make some biscuits because I have them and I think that would sound that just sounds so good and I have some really fancy cheese that I can put in between my biscuits so I'm only gonna make a few press spoon at seam until I always hate them. oh my gosh <laughs> I'm literally shaking y'all <laughs> I was not expecting it to work so fast. Usually it takes me forever, so that really caught me off guard, but yay, okay. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm glad y'all were here to see that. Okay, I'm not gonna make all the biscuits. I really want to just make a few. So 
Let me pause, wash my hands, and get to it. Okay, I would love to be able to put the rest of these biscuits into a Tupperware bra. Is that like kosher to do? I really just don't want eight biscuits right now. And they're just gonna get hard and sad and I don't want that to happen. So, let's see. Oh, did it look good? All right. Damn, these biscuits kind of lopsided. Smells amazing. Okay. Now I want to taste and see what it's missing. Okay. Oh my god. Wow. Wow. That is literally perfect. You gotta be kidding me. I didn't do anything. Wow. This is so good. Oh my gosh. Wow. I'm shook. I'm shooketh. Wow. Oh my gosh. It feels so nice and luxurious in your mouth. Mmm. Oh my god. You can taste everything. The garlic. The carrots. Mmm. The tomatoes. Oh my gosh. This is. Wow. This is why I love cooking. Like, just we did nothing and then we have something and it's so good. Mmm. Also, I did add some Italian flat parsley right before I zhuzhed it up. Wow. That is so good. My mind is blown. Okay, time to eat. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Wow, that was worth the wait because I was like, oh my God, I'm so hungry. But I feel like it would have been even, the flavor would have been even more like rich if I had let it roast for longer, but your girl couldn't. But wow, this is so good. Y'all can't tell me this is not an amazing looking meal. Like, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Don't mind my mess. I'm going to clean it up later. Wow, y'all. I'm ready. 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 I'm ready to dig in. To dig in. Oh, my gosh. I should have put shallots in there. I knew I should have put some shallots in there. Oh, I think that would have made it even better. Okay. Anywho, I'm out. Heading to pick up my meds. Hopefully it'll be super fast. All right, I did my little warm up, and that's pretty much what I do to get my joints sort of moving. Ever since I injured my ankle and had the reaction from the anti-rejection medication, my body needs the warm up more than I ever thought before. It's really windy, but 
forgive me I want to chat about this now so y'all I didn't even mention that I am seven months post transplant today yay honestly y'all I just can't believe it and if you watched my six month post transplant update I talked to you about how I didn't have any I don't have any more sickle cell pain which is absolutely crazy but ironically like maybe a couple of weeks ago I started experiencing more sickle cell pain and I think I'm gonna cross the street here to see if I'll get a little less wind so yeah this is the first time I'm like shamelessly vlogging outside so Bear with me, okay, y'all? And I'm gonna make all sorts of... Just trying not to get hit by a car or a bike. I'm gonna make all sorts of weird, like, hand signs so that my gimbal can uh, be, you know, make sure that I'm in frame. But, anywho, like I was saying, a couple of weeks ago, I actually started experiencing more chronic pain. And it's not that I feel like I'm having I'm definitely not having sickle cell crises because that's pathophysiologically not possible anymore. But I do feel like after I do things like some strenuous exercise, like me going on these walks or me doing my at-home workouts, and I also feel that being in the cold and like having, you know, being a little bit more stressed and having emotional anxiety, and I, I was feeling off last week and I talked to y'all about that, so I think those stress factors are already triggers for sickle cell pain and I think that even though I don't have sickle cell anymore my body still remembers those neural pathways and you know I still have a little bit of pain and ironically it's actually not that bad it maybe lasts a couple of hours I experience way less pain than I ever had before and the intensity is improved hello thank you I'm trying I'm still trying to figure out how to work it <laughs> I like it hello have a good day oh it's just so nice seeing people outside and happy and you know that makes me happy anywho so yeah so the pain is not that bad it's not as bad as it used to be and it's really transient as well. Basically, right now, I only have a little bit of pain and it lasts me maybe, you know, just a couple of hours. But after that, it goes away. And so I'm pretty amazed at that. But, you know, it's reminded me that this transplant process is definitely a journey and I'm not done even though I no longer have sickle cell disease. And so I've just been you know, learning to really enjoy this journey as I'm going on and be really grateful for every, you know, stop along the way. Yeah. And I'm going to take a seat here so I can get some rest. But yeah, I also wanted to talk about some survivor's guilt that I've been experiencing. And I've had survivor's guilt in the past, but I feel like I'm actually experiencing it at its worst just this week and it started off because I ended up landing on a YouTuber's channel who I used to watch her she would post videos about beauty and also she like really openly transparently shared about her experience with sickle cell disease and disease modifying therapies and you know I it was she was one of the first people I ever saw on social media on YouTube that I could look up to who had sickle cell disease and I landed on her page by accident yesterday or the day before and I'm gonna put my mask on um, and what happened was I saw her page and I ended up finding out that she had a bone marrow transplant and so I was like oh my god this is so exciting like she also had a transplant she got a cure you know I can't wait to see what her life looks like now and hi hi how are you good how are you i'm doing well and i went to her videos and her last video was in 2018 
And so I went digging like how she's doing now and naively in my mind I was like, oh my God, she's living a great life. And then I found out that she actually passed away. And I don't know why, but that really just crushed me. And I, it crushed me and I wish that, I don't know, there's something about it that really hurts because in my mind I'm like, man, it's like, you're trying to cure sickle cell, but at the same time, you can die trying to do that. And it just was a very humbling reminder that this process is not benign. And even though I'm like so, so, so grateful, you know, things can go wrong. And it made me feel hurt because I'm like, why did it work out for me? Why did I end up being cured? but she didn't. And I know she's not the only person who this happened to. I know people who have passed away from sickle cell complications directly and never got the opportunity to try to pursue a curative therapy. And so it just, it just hurts, man. So I'm like, I want us all to win. I want to stay to a point where, you know, this is not, I don't know. It's just, it's not something that's foreign. Like everyone gets to have that opportunity to live a pain-free life that they want to live. And it just really broke my heart that she never got that opportunity and I don't know it just hit me really hard and it just made me just even more grateful for my position and you know any infection could have taken me out you know any weird complication could have taken me out during the transplant process but I survived and it's still not over I still you see me put on my mask when you know I feel like people are getting a little bit closer to me and I just can't risk it but it's like uh, it's just I don't know the fragility of life is just a little bit more obvious and yeah I'm, I'm struggling with uh, reconciling the, the thoughts where it's like I get to be grateful that I received this transplant but then at the same time I know that other people tried to do the same and things didn't work out for them and so I don't know I've been feeling that pretty hard um, since yesterday and you know it was interesting because I, I, I didn't really know what to do with those feelings. And so I went and this morning I ended up doing my Bible study by myself. And I was reading Matthew chapter 14. And this is the part where like Herod um, is requested to kill John the Baptist. Y'all, if you don't believe in the Bible or whatever, like please don't, don't offended and just telling the story and if you don't know the story the characters I can link a few videos down below uh, where you can get to know the characters but I just feel like I'm not the expert so I'm not going to so this is the story that was happening uh, John the Baptist was requested to be beheaded and killed and he was and then they go tell the news to Jesus and John the Baptist and Jesus are cousins and John the Baptist comes before him to like claim the the good news like this is Jesus he's coming he's the Messiah and then Jesus finds out that he was killed and I'm thinking about like I'm like man how is Jesus reacting to you know the loss of someone that he loves and cares about and so he tries to go you know go to a secluded area and have some solitude but he ends up uh, a crowd of people end up following him and he ends up having compassion on those people and he decides to just speak to them and teach to them and feed them and after that happens he's able to you know finally have some solace and pray to the Lord and it just you know I'm not like Jesus let's 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 start there but it was just making me it made me feel like you know what it's okay to be hurt but i i don't have to stay there i can still move along hello i can still move along in my mission and my vision for my life my assignment you know that i have been placed to do on this earth i can still do that while hurting while grieving and you know even in those darkest moments i can use that as a positive way to have compassion on others and I hope that made sense, but it kind of was a little bit of encouragement for me today, even though I was feeling pretty down. Hello. I was feeling pretty down about, you know, that news. So anywho, I feel like I've talked enough now. I've rambled a whole lot, so I don't want to bore y'all to death. But yeah, those are the things that have been on my mind. and. 
I am just really excited to celebrate seven months post transplant. Woo! I'm so, so grateful. And you know, these hard things, these tragedies help remind me to be present and to be grateful and to celebrate what I have going for me today because not everyone gets to experience these things. And you know, it's just, it's a blessing and I'm grateful. If you love Day on the Life vlogs and want to see more about my life living post-transplant, definitely check out this video here where I take you along my appointments with me and through the struggle of living life with post-transplant fatigue. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. And as always, aspire to inspire. Toodles!